And that tells us that it's time for one of my favourite parts of the week. It's Free Speech Friday. We get a couple of people who believe in free speech and we just chew, chew through the events of the week. I want to welcome for the first time a guy, boy, and does he know how to use free speech? Um, he is the Mayor of Invercargill and we're not going to discuss escalators uh, and we're not, not going to use the N-word unless it's completely in context. A very warm welcome to Invercargill's Mayor, Nobby Clark. Nobby, nice to have you with us. Yeah, good morning, Sean. How are you? Bloody good, mate. Bloody good. And also joining us, and it's been a while, uh, I note that he had a whole lot of farmers in it, some sort of uh, federated farmers do, at his excellent hostelry in Molesworth Street the other day. His name is Alistair Boyce, known to you guys as Boise. Boise, how are you, mate? G'day, Sean. Good to be with you. All right. Do you know Nobby, Boise? Have you ever met Nobby? No, no, I haven't. Okay, say good day to each other. G'day, Nobby. Good I come down your way or yeah. I used to for duck shooting. Yeah, well, that's good. And, and I'm in Wellington next week, but so I may have the opportunity to drop it. There you go. Come on in for a beer. You'll be most welcome. Great. Yeah, that's all right. Lots of, lots of space. <laughs> now, Nobby, I just want to check that your phone connection is all right. Can you give me a one, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, ooh, are you on a on a speaker or a mobile or a? I'm on. I'm on a cell, but I am on speaker. Do you want me to turn the speaker off? Yeah, if you could just speak to me straight. Let's just give that a go. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, I think that is better, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we'll stick with that, yep. Nobby, if you don't mind. All yeah, right. That's okay. Let's kick off with. Actually, let's no. Let's leave that till later. Let's kick off with National's new reading, writing, arithmetic, three hours, basic stuff, primary, intermediate education policy yesterday. If it's a gimmick, I think it's quite a good one that a lot of people will be down with, don't you, Nobby? Oh, I, think it, I think it's a way to go. I mean, it's, I don't think it's a gimmick. I think we've got terrible results in those areas. Now, whether it's because the teachers aren't focusing on it or whether there's not enough teachers or... Um, whether, whether people are not at school enough to be picking up and learning these things, I don't know, but they're the basics they should be learning. All right. All right. You say yes. A and are you surprised, Nobby or, or, or Boise, that all the teacher unions are all filled of Labour Party and Green voters? Are you surprised that they all say it's terrible? Well, of course they're going to say that's terrible because the, the bottom line is, I guess, is that it's a criticism of them. Yeah. Yeah. Boise? Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. And I'm not surprised that uh, Chris Hipkins straight away deflected it uh, for the sensible policy that he, that he is. He, he, to, to say that uh, that's politicking and that you shouldn't use the education as a political um, spear is uh, ridiculous. It, <laughs> it's the foundation of our country uh, and it's, we've got to get it right. And for them to try and pass it off as, oh, no, you can't politic on education. Are you joking? Yeah, yeah. It has to be. All right. Well, what, what, will, the, what will the next thing be? We won't be able to politic on child, child poverty or, or child abuse. Or tax rates. Yeah. Or well, climate well, change. Well, or free speech. Well, or free speech. Oh, no. Yeah. Well. All right. So you guys give... I actually think, i got to say for Luxon... Uh, who I have been critical of being a little bit blamongy, uh, guys, a little bit vanilla. It's kind of good that he's saying here's something I stand for, isn't it? <clears throat> well, I guess yeah, election year is always a tough, yeah, tough time to be in election year. Um, if you're in the opposition party, if you're not putting up your own policies, which they tend not to do too early, because they get they get them picked through by the uh, by the reigning government, it's really hard to do anything other than criticise the government. So it's it's hard being in the opposition, I think. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you. I would agree with you, Nobby. Let's, well, let's move on. I'm going to throw in some real news, some real important news that actually New Zealand just care about and give a toss about. Uh, and lots of controversy about how this was done and the timing of how it was done. Some fella called, what is it, Razor Robinson who apparently coaches a team called the Crusaders. Um, hang on, hang on. I'm just going to have a wee nap now while you talk about rugby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boring. So, really? but, but, like, everyone's been waiting for this. You would think it was like 
someone's G- God has subbed out Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, look, look, we must be the only sport in the in the Western world that hasn't sacked our existing all black uh, coaching lot for the results of that. Yeah. When you go into English soccer or European soccer, you have a run of half a dozen games where you dismally fail to teams that you shouldn't fail to, uh, you replace. But we just keep hanging on. Yeah. Um, well, well, Boise, what do you think? What a terrible thing for Ian Foster. So he's off to win a Rugby World Cup. And basically already the people who employ him to say, we think you're useless. We're going to dump you straight afterwards. Maybe it's a bit of reverse psychology. He's really going to want to win now that everyone's made it quite clear they don't think he can. And I just wonder what you think if you're a player. Are you going to give your all to a coach who's basically on his way out? Uh, I just find the whole management process sort of ass up. It's, um, that's not how you manage uh, ins and outs of um, any organisation. Um the employment process is wrong. You can't have two, uh, a coach in waiting and a coach incumbent at the same time. Uh, yeah, it's just weak on the part of the NZRFU. Yeah, and, and, yep. and wouldn't it... Look, I'll say one other thing too, guys. I just think it would have been nice if, if Razor had said when he got appointed, if one of the first things he would have said was, I appreciate some words like this. I appreciate that I am part of the history of New Zealand and a legacy, and I pick up the torch from someone else. And I'd like to wish my uh, Ian Foster and the team all the best for the Rugby World Cup, and I'm there for them, and I wish them well. But he didn't do that. It was like oh, I'm really glad I got the job. So, so I guess the, the couple of issues in there. Um, why would you announce? before you've got your current squad heading to the World Cup, that you're replacing the coach. Does any sport in the world do that? Only rugby. Yeah. Why have they done it? I think they've done it because the, end, the, uh, the overarching organisation knows if they didn't give Razor a commitment, he'd be off to Scotland or somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so they had, they had to announce him. To announce him, they have to do a process. Why would you be Ian Foster now? From Razor's perspective, he's on a win-win. If they win the World Cup... So he's, why he's wasn't he magnanimous coach. enough to give a nod to Foster and realise that he'd put well, him in a tough position. Wouldn't that have been... Well, sorry, wouldn't a decent bloke have done that, Nobby? Well, I, I would have thought that the NZRU would have been sharp enough to do a bit of a comms session with him for half an hour before he actually did that photo opportunity and skilled him up on that because, um, you know, I, I think his um, his comms has not been good around that and so, since the announcement. Yeah. He, he would have given Ian a, Ian a bit of a heads up. Boy, see, it would have been a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? It would have been the right thing for a decent geezer to do. Look, I think Razor's a really good coach, and I think he should be the coach right now. But he might just not be... His Razor might not be sharp enough to have worked out the PR. There's something... Yep. I'm not being mean, guys, here, and I want to be inclusive and as rainbow and diverse as I can. He's a little different, isn't he, Mr Robinson? Yeah, I don't think that's a bad thing. I'd, I'd rush him, I'd, 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 uh, but you know, like he just hasn't got PR skills. He's somewhere on the spectrum. Yeah, Come on, guys, let's be honest. Speech. He's somewhere on the spectrum, isn't he? Well, ha- have have we seen him on the spectrum when he's been on the losing side? No, no, that's right. No, that'll, that'll be the that'll be the test. Okay, well, I just hope that he does come out in the next wee while going and say something supportive for Ian Foster. And, yep. you know, Fozzie's been left in a hell of a position by, I think, and I think you guys would agree, by bad, um, bad uh, management. Now, look, the other thing, and this probably should have led with this, I probably should have talked about this all, all this week. The International <coughs> Panel on Climate Change has come out with a new computer model predictive report that the world is going to end again. Honestly, this time it's for real in 10 years. And uh, all the mainstream media and the Green parties have all been wringing their hands and say we've just got this one chance before all the polar ice caps disappear and fish start falling from, from the sky. I'll be honest, guys, I find it hard to get worked up about this stuff because we've had 30 years of this and the sky hasn't fallen and 
bugger all change in temperature and there aren't actually, if you look at the records, any more severe weather events. Um, are you worried, more worried or less worried than you were at the start of the week in this latest severe warning over climate change, Nobby? Yeah, look, I, I might be accused of being a, a climate denier in some ways, but look, I, I think uh, we have to do some work, but uh, there, there's a whole industry around the doom and gloom stuff. I think if you go back and millions and billions of years back, um, the Earth has always adjusted. Uh, we do it when it goes cold and when it goes hot as well. Um, look, at the end of the day, we we sit in council and we don't sometimes know what to do. They're, it's a, They're trying to force a... Uh, upwards movement, so everybody at the grassroots level saying this has got to be done. There seems to be no direction from our current government. Uh, we seem to be playing political football with it. Um, you know, what do we do? Do we buy some e-cars? Is that going to satisfy our, our need? It needs to be much more coordinated on a regional basis, but at the end of the day, we could be carbon neutral tomorrow and we've still got the same problem. And it right? wouldn't make a bloody what? difference as long as China does mm-hmm. what it does so and America it, does what cool it does. It. Yeah. Let's call out the big, the big ones. China, America, India, who's building coal-fired yeah. power stations, um, Brazil, and our lovely neighbours in Australia that are providing the coal. Yeah. Um, so long as that happens, we can whistle in the wind. We could have 100, 100 New Zealands. It wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. Boise, are you rolling out the seaside um, uh, deck at, at, at the back bench for, for when the sea rises, like we've been told it's going to be for 30 years? No, it's business as usual. I mean, just it's an ongoing beat up that I get really frustrated with. Um, and you've just outlined uh, the real situation, which is the developing world will control man's uh, contribution to rising, cl- uh, rising temperatures of um, global climate. So um, we, we can't do a lot, but we, we should absolutely control our pollution and, um, you know, maintain our pristine environment, both from a commercial angle and from our own use angle. Um, and, and I'm a bit confused that just before, I'm not aware of this recent statement, but uh, remember Barry Brill on your show? And oh, yeah. We, um, and the IPCC and so actually, the UN has actually downgraded its Dire predictions of climate change the by 1. the end of the century. one point five, yeah. So what, has that been upgraded again? No, they're just saying that that's still the end of the world. They've just redefined that as the end of the well, world. It's not the end of the world. It, no, it just makes our life a wee bit more difficult, and they're not necessarily the predominant, uh, you know, the, the the determining factor. I mean, the Tongan volcano eruption. I mean, the amount of carbon and water and everything that came into the Earth's atmosphere from that. Probably far outweighed. Um, oh, New Zealand's contribution. To, New Zealand's contribution to climate yeah, change. Well, absolutely. absolutely more than. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Nobby, I'm interested down there in Invercargill. I mean, Wellington's pretty well stuffed. We've got a green-dominated council who are all going around rainbowing all over the place and building cycleways and save the planet. You got a, you got a hundred. You got 120 MPs as well. So. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's yeah. not. That's it's not, not nice here. Helpful. Has Invercargill got that problem, or are you still relatively rational and in the real world down there? Oh, no, definitely the latter. Uh, people, are, people are quite optimistic. Look, everything in life we'll adjust to. It means that we need to pull back some, uh, some uh, houses that might be sitting too close to the coast, or we need to strengthen up the banks of our rivers. We'll do that over the next 20, 30 years to make sure that we mitigate the risk that's coming. And, um, you know... How many how, how many countries have built uh, nuclear bunkers because they know that potentially a nuclear war may come? So you, you safeguard against the outfall of that. You don't you don't start getting on a crusade about getting rid of uh, nuclear yeah. arms. Um, so yeah, no, I think it's a it's an overreaction. I'll get crucified for saying that. But yeah. um, no, be one of the uh, can I be honest? One of the other reasons for getting you on the show today, and I, I hate to raise this now, and I know I wasn't on the agenda. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, and Boise will be with me. It's, it's bluff oyster season, right? Yes. And do you know that the fee for appearing for a local body politician on, on the platform's Free Speech Friday is two dozen bluffies? And we can have one at the back bench next week. Oh, okay. So that, yeah. let's get together for bluffies. How is the season going, Nobby? And Alistair, what's prices like? Because you've got them on the menu. Well, I think if you, if you, go, if you go to a restaurant, you're probably paying... 65 to $70 a dozen. 
that that, that they're prepared. So yeah. They've, you know, they've got a bit of the old stuff over them. I don't particularly like oysters, but having said that, if I, if I've got a... a don't tell, don't tell your place, voters, Nobby. That's like sacrilege yeah. down there. Yeah, I know, but if I, if I, if I go and get a dozen stubbies at uh, one of those posh uh, uh, Wellington pubs that we've been talking about two seconds ago, I'll probably pay more than the oysters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's... Yeah, I can hear Alistair laughing in the background. And the county is money. Um, yeah, that's well, we, we pay a lot more rent than what you do down in Bloody in Bacargo, I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, some of the best oysters I've ever had are down there at the start of the duck shooting season. Yeah, and uh, yeah. We, uh, we were shucking them to order uh, in the in our uh, massive um, cavernous uh, um, my, my. shacks. That, yeah, well, we yeah. had the my mys, and then we do all the processing afterwards. <clears throat> we do hundreds of ducks in between, scoffing hundreds of oysters, and it's just heaven. Yeah. Good idea, Sean, Sean. He's not. He's not telling you. He's not telling you the, the truth there. The chances are he's drunk about two bottles of whiskey on the day. He, he shot at about a hundred ducks and probably hit one. Yeah, um, and and he's he's probably got somebody at the back kitchen just doing the one that's getting plugged. No, but you need to read my book. You need to no, read my know. book. Have you written a book, Boise? <laughs> God, anyone no, you can do even it. Know can... that, Sean. It's hunting yarn. Oh, that's three right. I alone yeah, yeah. On duck shooting and gore. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Okay. All right. You need a better publisher. Sorry. Oh. Hang on. Where, where, where's gore? <clears throat> it's just up the road. You can get there on a cycleway. It's oh, okay. Yeah, down there. Nice you, you don't even have to yeah. go up a hill. All right, look, I want, to be, I want to move on to another story that came up overnight, sort of associated with Auckland's war on road cones. I think such a great move. But Wayne Brown has says that local government New Zealand is just a never-ending piss-up, so Auckland City is out. Um, Nobby Clark, is he right about local government New Zealand? Well, I, I think he, 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 on one level he is right. Um, there's no secret in the, in the in the last term that local government New Zealand, in the eyes of some councils, uh, were sold out. Um, they they got into bed with the internal affairs. They got money to promote three waters, which was against what a significant number of their membership is is wanting. Um, so they've got some recovery to do. Uh, local government New Zealand definitely does. I wouldn't be at all surprised um, um, post the. Uh, the, re, uh, the upcoming announcement by the the minister, this is the Labor minister, on um, three waters that we'll get in the next day or three, um, that some other councils will also think, you know, what's the benefit? Okay, is Invercargill considering pulling out? Uh, we, we considered it uh, last term. Uh, we're, we're in it at the moment. But, again, it's uh, it, the, the challenge, I guess, for local government New Zealand and the structure that goes with it is that... Uh, if you're not del if you're not delivering to your memberships and you're more focused on delivering um, some well-being to the government, um, then you're in trouble. Yeah, Boise for Wellingtonians, mate. I, I look at Auckland; they got a mayor. He's different. He doesn't give a stuff about the media. He's got the war on the road cones. He's out of the LGC, and we've got a mayor who just has just declared a war on free speech and women, hasn't she? Yeah, she's she's a party girl. She's uh, got a big um, rainbow party going on and uh, the, um, on the parade. Um, I mean, this is a big beat-up. I've never heard of Posey Parker. Uh, now I want to. Uh, I want to see what she's got to say, and I don't want people uh, being shut down. Uh, we can hear all sides, but we're only getting one narrative, and I would like to hear what Posey Parker's got to say. Well, you know? well, in any case, you don't need to go along on Sunday. She's going to be here on the platform live, taking calls, Boise, uh, after 8 o'clock on Monday morning. And I've invited yeah, all well, the people I, who I, hate I her to come on. on. I might still go down on Sunday because I just want to see direct democracy in action and see what's going on down there and um, yeah. uh, see what, what Do you know there happens. are a lot of gay um, people who are putting bricks in their handbags and want to shut you down and her down? Well, we had a lot of bricks at the occupation protest but, uh, that, you know, you still have to sort of um, see what's going on and, but well, not participate, but, um, it may, <laughs> you know... You yeah. have to see the reality before your eyes, don't yeah. you? Yeah. And there's no point hiding <clears throat> from the reality. And if they're going to have bricks in their handbags, that needs to be exposed. Yeah. And also what Posey Parker has to say, it's now an absolutely national event. It's been mediaised. 
um, and uh, very poorly meteorised in the mainstream media. So I, I've tried looking stuff up on her and seeing what she's got to say and things like that, and I don't see that she's a Nazi. <laughs> I've got no, Well, we had no the Jewish Council on this morning saying she wasn't a Nazi. And for our leading politicians in the government yeah. to, to behave like they are and um, shutting down someone without having the full facts and uh, uh, undermining um, someone's character uh, without knowing who she is and what she is, because they patently don't. Like, oh, yeah. That's why I think uh, when, when she's on your show and all that, I, I think if you can really delve into what she really yeah. believes... and. Um, yeah, that we've already had her on then. once last Friday. There has been nothing yeah, stopping... Her, but we didn't really get into her beliefs. Yeah, you know, well, well I, didn't, I was just trying to find out basically who the hell she was because I didn't know before the Rainbow Lobby yeah. started losing their stuff either. Yeah. And Not, now we all want to know. So yeah. you've got the scoop again. You're ahead of the, you're ahead of the game. Nobby, so stay ahead of the game. <laughs> Nobby, is Invercargill... Is that a... You a Rainbow Tick organisation? Are you... Um, yeah, look, I am. I support the rainbow community. But having said that, this is not a rainbow issue, I don't think. It, it's it's more the core issue is the core issue of ability to have free speech. Yeah. So, you know, if you want central government to start determining who can come into our country and who can't come in, depending on what they say, well, we start to look like Afghanistan, um, where, you know, you, you can't speak out against certain types of religion, otherwise you get stoned to death type stuff. And, uh, and, and, and people have a right to say what they want to say, as yeah. much as I find it the right-wing Nazi groups at Holland, um, they've got a right to speak just as much as we've got militants on the left as well. Um, yeah. And the moment you start closing down, down that and you move to the central, um, the rainbow community who are now jumping up and down will be in a far worse position. Yeah. I think I think from what I can read about uh, Posey is that she believes women are women and and any any other deviation of that is not on her scope. She doesn't like people. Do you that believe that too, down. Nobby? I mean, can men have babies? No, no, they can't. And I, and I think once we start talking about chest, chest feeding as opposed to breastfeeding, I think that's an actual farcical stuff. And I can understand why some, I guess, conservative women feel a little bit un, unhinged by that. Mm. But having said that, at the end of the day, we want people of all races and all gender determination to be happy. And, I, and I, if somebody yeah. Including women, and who I want to feel safe, yeah, Nobby. Yeah, indeed. Um, people, people that are... Have I guess what they uh, concern, what they think is identity issues that don't fit with the norms. I want them to be happy and not to be excluded. Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, when we start piecing around, saying, "Oh, we won't be calling any breastfeeding anymore. We'll be calling it chest feeding." I mean, yeah. really, this is the woke left at its absolute worst, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, so, see you with that woke left at their worst, including our media. Oh, yeah, and I'm on with way. inclusivity. I, I, I like, I, I, Nobby's right. I mean, we're not trying to exclude anyone out, you know. I, I've got rainbow people uh, working for me. I always have always engaged lesbians a lot. I've got no problem at all with it. But I do have a problem when, like Nobby says, when governments start shutting people down and shutting people out. They keep mud the left when government and the Greens uh, keep trying to shut out other opinion and keep trying to marginalise out and push everyone to the right who doesn't agree with them. So you're either in or you're out. Well, there's heaps of shades of grey, just like there are uh, these, all these different genders. Well, th that's all right. They can, everyone can believe what they want. Just don't inflict the, negativ the negativity mm -hmm. on, on other people. You know, no. live and, your and life and you, let other yeah. people live theirs. And, Nobby, you are in some ways an example of how you get through this cancel culture. I mean, you know, a couple of weeks yeah. ago, you and the N-word and Ming Foon and yeah. the whole lot, you yeah. just uh, said bugger off. And you're still here. You're still the mayor of Invercargill. The world is still yeah. turning, right? Yeah, well, I think I think there's one issue that we haven't touched on, mm. but Alistair was alluding to it um, mm. by some of his comments, which was um, you don't hear too much in mainstream media. It tends to be all the platforms that are doing the hard work. Yeah. And why is it? I think that democracy fund that the government set up, $50 million a year to promote the democracy voice through the media is actually nothing more than controlling the media. You know, I, I've, I can show you examples where I've put to, to mainstream media, I've put issues that touch on um, on race and, and, and co-governance. And look, they won't go anywhere near the topic yeah. because they know that they don't want to put at jeopardy their ability to tap into that democracy fund. 
Well, um, Nobby, and, you can and, always and ring start, us. You can always and ring don't us. Start me on, don't even start me on spin-off. I mean, that's another Yeah, issue, oh, oh, well, they're not journalism, mate. That's just, I don't know, wokes to central. But, yeah, but they're, but they're funded by government. Yeah, and, and, and RNZ, and, and, and the they main, all work the, together, yeah. 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 The mainstream papers, and you know that the mainstream papers, unfortunately, are struggling for circulation. Um, you know, along comes government saying, look, you know, we can help you. We've got this democracy fund you can tap in. Um, you know, it, it's a covert way of controlling the, the speaker in New Zealand, and, and that really worries me. Well, Nobby, you will never be controlled, and you'll never be silent here. Neither will you, Boise. Maybe, guys, we get together for some oysters and maybe some bevies. Um in the woke capital of New Zealand uh, I'll put next Nobby week. in charge of the oysters and I'll, I'll do the beer. You bring, the, okay, yeah. Yeah, and I will provide the wit. <laughs> yes, as you, as you always do, Sean. All right, guys. Did, did, he, did, he say, did he say the whip, did he? No, the, the whip. No, I'm not into that stuff, though. There'd be nothing yeah, wrong no, with it if I wasn't. No, me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, Nobby. We'll have you back. Thank yeah. you very much for being part yeah. of Free Speech Friday. Boise, we'll catch okay, up soon. Uh, that is it uh, for Free Speech Friday.